What's going on, smart people? Today we are kicking things up a notch, and we're going to we're going to be dabbling with some relativistic quantum mechanics here. So if you watch my normal videos, but you're not too comfortable with non-relativistic quantum or special relativity, this might not be the one for you. But today we're going to be deriving. I say deriving. It's 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 more motivating the Klein-Gordon equation, which is really one of the first attempts uh, at relativistic quantum mechanics. It's uh, when I say relativistic, of course I mean special relativity. Let me move my head so you can see. But let's get started. Now throughout this video, I'm going to be using natural units, which is where we set h bar equal to c equal to 1. So that's just saying we're not using meters per second anymore, and we're not using joule seconds anymore. We're choosing units such that these, both, these quantities are both 1. And that's just going to keep us from having to write a whole bunch of h bars and c's. Since we're going to be using something that's relativistic and quantum mechanical, those would just be really cluttery. But if you're not used to this kind of notation or this kind of convention, let's start by just writing out the regular Schrodinger equation in natural units, which is just going to be I d psi dt uh, plus del squared psi. This is actually going to be a 1 over 2m del squared psi plus v psi equals 0. Okay, yeah, so normally there would be an h-bar here and an h-bar squared here, but those are one now, so that's pointless to write. Uh, but let's, let's take a look at the Schrodinger equation and see, again, how we sort of motivate its form in the first place. Well, we know that this can be rewritten as some Hamiltonian operator acting on psi equaling the energy of the particle times psi. But what is h? h is just the total energy, really. It's just the kinetic plus... Uh, the potential, where the kinetic term is really just p squared over 2m plus whatever potential, right? You're given the potential and that's how you solve the problem. Um, and in order to turn this into a quantum mechanics problem, you start with the idea that you can replace classical observables with quantum mechanical operators, right? So uh, energy becomes an operator by it becoming I d, no, no psi, I d d t. And likewise, momentum becomes an operator by it becoming minus I times the gradient. And again, normally there would be h bars here, but we're not focusing on those right now. Okay? So classically, we really just put this into the classical Hamiltonian and have it act on some wave function, and then we solve the equation. It basically turns this into an eigenvalue problem. And we can do the exact same thing, really, if we want to incorporate special relativity into the mix, but the only difference is the jumping off point. The only difference is instead of this representation that we're using and then tacking on a wave function and solving for it, is we're going to start instead with the Einstein energy momentum relation. Okay, so we're going to keep this here, but instead of the Hamiltonian acting on this, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with energy squared equaling m squared plus p squared. And again, there will be c's in there, but we're not focusing on all the c's. We're using natural units. Get that out of here. Okay. So now we can just substitute in this relationship here where p's goes to this, e's go to this, and this e squared just becomes, well, i squared is going to be minus 1, so it's going to be minus d squared. Oops, let me write that a little bit better. And this is going to be our thing that's acting on, it's not really going to be our wave function. You don't really call it a wave function when you're using the Klein-Gordon equation. It's more of like a scalar field. So I'm not going to use psi, I'm going to use phi, or phi, both oh, thumb, dt squared is equal to m squared. Well, there's nothing for that, so that's just going to be m squared times phi. And then uh, we have a plus p squared, so it's minus i times minus i. That's going to be a minus sign uh, del squared phi. And in a sense, we're almost done, or we're pretty much done. You could leave it at this. This is technically the Klein-Gordon equation. Okay. But we went through all the trouble of incorporating special relativity in the mix. So now we're sort of at a clash for notation conventions, right? If you're doing regular quantum mechanics, you're using like state vectors or just regular vectors. Um, but when you go into special relativity, it's all about the four vector notation, right? 
So let's see if we can write this using four vector notation. And in doing so, it's going to show that this new representation, this new relativistic sort of sh version of the Schrodinger equation is covariant. And it's going to be more explicit if we use four vectors. Okay? We're going to keep that there. For those of you who might be new or might not be too comfortable with the idea of four vectors, let's, let's get some stuff straight. So a four vector is really any set of four quantities that transforms like this under Lorentz transformation. So we have some ct prime and we have some z. We're going to be boosting in the z-axis is equal to, we've got cosh theta minus cinch okay, and then z. So any four vector or any set of four quantities that transforms like this is a four vector. Cool, got that squared away. So if we get into four vectors, we can express it in terms of like one part that has a component of time and three parts that has components of space. So we can have it as something that's like something with contravariant indices. Contravariant is up top. And then I'm going to label x0 to be the time component one. And then I'm going to write a little x with a bar on top to say that this is a part that has our x, y, and z, or whatever our spatial part is. Uh, so it's assumed that this part is going to be our spatial vector. Similarly, you might remember from your Calc 3, or of course you remember if you're watching a video on this, that we can treat things like the del operator as a vector. So one thing that we can do is we can think of our, we can construct what I'm going to call a four gradient. And we're going to write it this way. So it's going to be d mu, mu downstairs. Typically, whenever I think of uh, covariant vectors, I think of a vector with displacement in the denominator, so like a d dx. And then contravariant is going to be up top, so that would be something like dx dt. Uh, not always, but you can, you can express them however you want, but that's just the convention. So uh, a four gradient, so d mu, we're going to define uh, the first one is going to be our time component, so that's going to be our d dt, and the second one is just going to be the regular spatial gradient, so our del operator. Okay? And then what I want to do is I want to find out how to do a dot product between these things. So I have a video on how to do the dot product of a four vector, but just to, you know, have everything all in one video, let's go ahead and find out how do we do something like uh, d mu d mu. For those of you, again, who might not know, if you have uh, repeated indices in the upper and the lower parts, you're summing over them. So it's like a dot product, right? You, you sum over each component, each component's product. So if we want to do this, this is the same thing. What we need to do is we need to sandwich in or incorporate our metric into this. So this is the same thing as, like, say, some metric, let's say mu nu times d mu new. This is the way that you can actually develop some kind of dot product between four vectors. This is what's going on behind the scenes. And this is what's going on behind the scenes with even a three vector. It's just redundant to write out the metric. So in this, in this case, I'm going to be using the metric uh, convention where we're doing plus, minus, minus, minus. Okay. And I'm going to erase some of this now. What I'm getting at is I basically want to express the four vector equivalent of the Laplacian. It's not quite accurate to say it like that, but I'll, I'll define it once we get there. How about that? So what I want to do is I want to find out what d mu, d mu is, and we define d mu equal to d dt, in the del operator, and we said that this is going to be g mu nu. It's going to be on the same one. Okay, you see that? Not too bright. Perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sandwich in the metric here. Like I said, I'm going to use the metric convention plus, minus, minus, minus. So that tells us that our metric is uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. Okay. 
that can be a little cumbersome to write out and we're already expressing a four vector in terms of two components because it's assumed that this is x, y, and z. And since x, y, and z here all have the same sign, I'm going to rewrite this as just one, zero, zero, minus one with a bar on it. That way you know that this distributes to each of my uh, spatial component vectors, okay? So, let's go ahead and carry this out. I'm gonna put this metric in between both of these and express these in terms of row and column vectors. So I'm gonna write this as d, dt, and del, one, zero, zero, uh, minus one, and d, dt, and del. Okay, so this one isn't changing yet. This is just gonna be d, dt, and del, then we got a 1 times ddt, that's still going to be a ddt. Then we've got a 0 times that, and then we got a 0 and a minus 1 times del. So this is going to be a minus del here. Okay, and then when we uh, do a little matrix multiplication, what this gives us is that d mu d mu is equal to d squared dt squared minus del squared. And another way of writing this is this is actually called the Delambert operator. So you might see this written as a box, a little square squared is equal to that. Okay, so this is sometimes called the wave equation operator, the wave operator, Delambertian. It's in Griffith, so you can see that there. It's not, it's not anything that's too wild. But what we see is... Uh, in our Klein-Gordon equation here, we have it. We have an explicit representation of the D'Alembert operator. And the thing is, is that uh, we're working with four vectors. We started out with four vector definitions of uh, the gradient, which means that it's uh, Lorentz invariant, or maybe covariant is the right way to put it. Not covariant in the sense that it's lower indices, covariant in the way that it transforms under Lorentz transformations. So let's go ahead and substitute this in here. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move this del squared over. So we got minus d squared phi dt squared plus del squared phi. And uh, let's bring the m squared to over equals zero. And let's just multiply the whole thing by minus 1. So we get d squared phi minus Now we explicitly have the Delambert operator. So we get box squared phi plus n squared phi equals 0. And then you can treat this as if you're factoring it out, but uh, so we can write this as there we have another representation of the Klein-Gordon equation. And because we started with four vectors, we know that this is Lorentz covariant, so it's more explicit. If we use it like this, it, we don't really know just by looking at it if it's invariant under Lorentz transformation. I need to be careful because I keep using invariant and covariant inter like interchangeably. Invariant is typically used if you're talking about a scalar. Covariant uh, relates to certain equations or vectors or things like that. So, um, but regardless, it's talking about things not changing under uh, Lorentz transformation. But yeah, this is the Klein-Gordon equation. It applies to particles that have spin zero. So off the top of my head, I know the Higgs boson. I can't really think of any others. But, so it's a little limiting in that sense, but it's a first attempt at uh, a relativistic quantum mechanic, so it's pretty cool. I should have the next video on the tensor calculus kind of series that I've been doing out sometime this week, or I definitely will, actually. I'm definitely going to have it out. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Let me know in the comments section if you enjoyed this video as well. I'll see you guys there.